the whole point is that your research says nothing of the, this is true. The Russians had no hand in this. It, and the people who shot were not government agents. It was people who were affiliated with the Maidan protesters who wanted to help what was happening, but did so by shooting protesters themselves and police people in order to justify exactly that, exactly what we are reading on Wikipedia right now. That's the whole, that's the goal you're is, is, is what your research also shows, right? Yes, there is like beyond any reasonable doubt that they were responsible. And I even found a video from CNN, which is a video which was never broadcast video by CNN, in which you have a group of these snipers from which you can recognize uh, the kind of, uh, individual members of this group and leader who is connected to far right, uh, right sector and through border members. So they would go in front of my down stage when the massacre started, they would go in front of my down stage with hunting rifles and uh, with a weapon which looked like Kalashnikov weapon, and they would start shooting in CNN. Television crew filmed them. So I, my studies found no evidence of any Russian involvement. Again, this is based on examination of all available evidence. And this finding of my research was confirmed officially by Ukrainian persecution, persecuting general of Ukraine, who actually stated publicly that there was no evidence of Russian involvement in the Maidan massacre. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal, and due to the sad anniversary of the Maidan massacre, during which more than 100 people were killed by sniper fire on February 20, uh, 2014, I will talk today to Ivan Kachanovsky. Professor Kachanovsky is a Ukrainian-Canadian political scientist at the University of Ottawa who researched the massacre in detail. Last year, he published the paper The Maidan Massacre, Trial and Investigation Revelations, Implications for the Ukraine... Russia, war, and relations. Professor Kachanovsky, thank you for coming online today. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Professor Kachanovsky, you are one of the people who try to look academically at what happened 10 years ago. Um, and it's it's incredible that it's already 10 years uh, in, in, in a couple of days. But um, can you maybe tell me in that paper that you wrote, what made you write such a detailed study? Um, and how did you conduct the study as compared to what there was before? Uh, so this is actually was my second peer reviewed article, which was published in peer reviewed journal. And I first published another article specifically looking into environment of far right into this massacre. And afterwards, uh, just a few months ago, I published yet another uh, peer-reviewed journal article, which was based on my original uh, study, which I presented in October of 2014 at the Ukrainian Studies Seminar at the University of Ottawa, and later at the annual meeting of American Political Science Association in uh, San Francisco in 2015. So these uh, studies are based on my uh, 10 years of my research, because I was watching Maidan Massacre live as it happened. I specialize in uh, conflicts in Ukraine, I specialize in political violence in Ukraine. So I research all cases, all major cases of political violence, conflicts, wars in Ukraine in the 20th uh, century, uh, since 20th, since middle of 20th century, basically since uh, 1930s and and um, and this is was for me natural to look into this kind of events because of their importance and because I specialize in researching such issues and now in addition to this uh, three peer reviewed journal articles and uh, one book chapter which I published before I have uh, two books which would examine also this massacre one book which would be uh, which is called from from the Maidan to the Russia Ukraine war would look into this massacre as origins of this conflict which again led uh, the, this massacre led to overthrow of Yanukovych government later it escalated into Russian accession of Crimea into civil war and the Russian military interventions in Donbass. And afterwards, when Russia invaded Ukraine, this was a dramatic escalation of all these conflicts, but which can go back to this uh, Maidan massacre. So that's why it was very important to analyze this massacre. In addition to this book, which would look into such kind of um, a cascade of conflicts which started from Maidan massacre, I have another book from another major Western university, uh, major academic press, Western uh, academic press, which would examine 
only Maidan massacre itself because of its importance. I think it's called Maidan massacre in Ukraine. Um, I think the massacre which or the mass killing which uh, which changed the world. So this is a basic title because of such great importance of this event to understand not only what happened in Ukraine ten years ago, which is I think was a very important case of political violence, of um, human rights violations, uh, which led to overthrow of Ukrainian government, but also to understand the current war, which is ongoing war, uh, which would determine not only future of Ukraine but also would determine um, the future of world order and would affect many other countries you're absolutely right of course this um this event 10 years ago was was cataclysmic in several ways not only because of the violence but because also of the change of government that it brought along and then the minsk uh process that in the end failed to produce what it was supposed to produce which is a lasting kind of reconciliation but by now what we everybody watching this channel is trying to understand is how much of that was intentional I intentional in the way that this was supposed to become a war how much of it was was done by which side and i mean who is to blame for all of this and i think one one thing is important in the paper that i read from you is you write very clearly the maidan massacre does not justify the illegal inv illegal russian invasion of ukraine Conversely, the Russian invasion does not justify the Maida massacre of the police and the protesters. Um, can we maybe start with your own views of the... Let's start with your view on the current war. Uh, yes, is, and I who's, said... Who's that because you're, you're a Ukrainian, right? I would really like to hear what is your view on the war itself right now? Yes, I'm a Ukrainian and, uh, and I'm a scholar. So again, as I attach to looking to this objectively as a political scientist, because I study conflicts, including conflicts in Ukraine, uh, violence. So I know I know all this. Um, I teach conflicts in different countries. So, so for me, this is natural to look into this as a scholar and as a Ukrainian. I think kind of I have an advantage compared to many other scholars who actually very few scholars actually political scientists in the world are able to do research based on primary sources because very few speak both Ukrainian and Russian, which are main languages in Ukraine um, uh, and which are required for research. So I examine the war as well i also uh, this would be a part of a book which i mentioned which kind of analyzes this war and uh, i can say that uh, this invasion of ukraine is illegal by russia uh, which is a violation of international law and uh, that uh, again uh, the, it was uh, not justified by the russian claims that uh, again uh, or false claims that ukraine is nazi state or neo-nazi state which false claim or that there was a genocide in Donbass, which are so this is like a false claims and um, kind of there was no justification for this but um, uh, again uh, this war goes back to uh, to the conflicts in ukraine so this was escalation of the conflicts in ukraine which started with maidan massacre and this was recognized uh, not only by putin for instance in recent his interview to tucker carlson he mentioned this massacre repeatedly but this was also recognized by ukrainian politicians ukrainian leaders who mentioned that basically conflict started with this Maidan massacre, and even a uh, head of the European Union Commission, Ursula, I think I'm from, uh, I forgot her last name. Uh, so Your she mind. basically, yes, uh, so basically she did the same uh, similar statements that basically was started or conflict started in uh, during the Maidan massacre, which obviously she blamed on, on Yanukovych and government forces. So, but if you look into other factors which are very important, again, so Russia mentioned. Um, and Putin mentioned NATO expansion, and I can say that in my book, I also this was important factor of uh, of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But um, uh, Russia inflated the threat, threat of uh, NATO expansion because there was no uh, real possibility of such um, kind of membership for Ukraine in the foreseeable future. Because again, this would have led to a conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and between uh, Russia and the West. So, West uh, Western countries or NATO members would not give such membership for Ukraine. They can use Ukraine, but I think they use Ukraine against Russia, and this is why, uh, like Western countries, supported this overthrow of Yanukovych government because they regarded Ukraine as a tool against Russia to contain Russian influence and, and Ukraine basically became client state of the United States 
in which uh, even uh, like top government officials, uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine, uh, Prosecutor General of Ukraine, uh, head of the security service of uh, security service of Ukraine and other top officials were nominated, appointed, or dismissed with involvement of United States officials or embassy officials or uh, Biden uh, himself when he was vice president of of, of the United States and uh, Victoria Nuland in a famous uh, phone call which was recorded. So this basically Ukraine was was used as a tool against uh, again uh, as a tool against Russia and now. Uh, the war in Ukraine is not only a war between Russia and, and Ukraine, which Russia denies, they claim this is just special military operation, but this is obviously a war between Russia and Ukraine, but in addition to this, there is also a war between, a proxy war between uh, Russia and the West in Ukraine, when Ukraine is used as a proxy, and in addition to this, there is still element of civil war, in um, in Ukraine, uh, still ongoing civil war, which started in 2014 in Donbass, because uh, not only Russian forces fighting against Ukraine, but also uh, a very large number of Donbass residents and Crimea residents, uh, and the, which were annexed, uh, these two regions were annexed by Russia. So these two factors are very, also very important. And if you look into the role of Russian imperialism, which is often dominate, basically this is dominant uh, narrative which is promoted by the media, uh, this was important factor, kind of, uh, it had important factor based on my research, but it was secondary factor. Because without this massacre in Ukraine, without uh, other conflicts in Ukraine, there would be no uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. But uh, when Russia invaded of Ukraine, this is, uh, they initially uh, tried to kind of um, to force uh, Zelensky government into uh, either negotiations to basically accept a neutral status of Ukraine, or they uh, try to do a regime change in Ukraine, basically to change uh, policy or to change the government in Ukraine. And there was a very real possibility of peace deal to end this war in April of 2022, when there was uh, almost ready agreement, which was um, supposed to be signed by Zelensky and Putin. And according to various Ukrainian officials, basically you have head of Ukrainian delegation in this peace talks, two members of this delegation, and other Ukrainian officials who, say, who stated that uh, agreement was very close to be signed. And uh, this agreement basically included provisions that Russia would withdraw their forces from uh, all uh, kind of uh, areas of Ukraine, which was so, which occupied by Russia since Russian invasion. So this was, I think, very important agreement. And as part of this um, agreement, uh, Russia withdrew their forces from Kyiv area. And so this is, I think, a very important kind of development because this kind of this could have uh, saved a lot of lives in Ukraine. This could have saved a lot of uh, kind of need to again to fight Russia, which is now kind of uh, war is going on uh, for again for very long time without any possibility of defeat of Russia, but it, there was a real possibility for Ukraine just to come back, to basically take back control of all, all these territories which were occupied by Russia at the start of the war without actually fighting and for for exchange, basically for uh, declaring Ukraine a neutral state, not joining NATO, not to have any military bases, which was again uh, not a big kind of concession because this was original kind of um, because of Ukraine, which was signed in Ukrainian constitution, the original constitution and also kind of uh, there was no real possibility of NATO membership, which I mentioned. So, and this is uh, this uh, peace deal agreement was actually broken, or kind of was blocked actually by Western countries, uh, United States and United Kingdom and other Western countries, because they decided that they could uh, fight Russia using Ukraine as a proxy. And in order to weaken Russia, this is again was official statement from the uh, U.S. Minister of Defense, and and uh, and this is I think a big tragedy because there is no possibility of UK defeating Russia and now Ukraine is in very dangerous situation because uh, now there is a uh, kind of uh, real possibility of defeat of Ukraine and the only question would be how much territory Ukraine would lose uh, during this war and it's very likely that again Russia would not never now agree kind of to return to Ukraine territories which were annexed by Russia including not only Donbass and Crimea but also uh, two other regions of Ukraine and there is possibility that Russia could also uh, annex other regions of Ukraine because uh, uh, Putin and Russian government regard them as uh, historical Russian lands. Even so, there is no total support in these regions with, uh, for joining Russia with the exception of Donbass and Crimea. Thank you very much. This is a, was a very, very good 
and very precise rundown of um, all that has been going on politically. And I would say that I, I'm 100% in agreement with you. I view the war in exactly the same terms. Uh, and I'm very happy to hear that you 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 also come to the same conclusions, which is a very nuanced view, by the way, of saying like we can neither neither say that Russia did nothing wrong. I mean, obviously Russia did uh, Russia made grave mistakes and grave breaches of international law. On the other hand, obviously uh, the West has its hand in Ukraine and it has been fomenting um, some of the things that have been going on ever since 2014. So maybe let's go now back to 10 years ago when this whole tragedy started to really unfold and unfolded very bloodily. Because up until now, I, I believe the first convictions for inside Ukraine for what happened in 2014 only happened late last year or early this year. Uh, we, for 10 years, nobody was convicted of any murder, right? Yes, exactly. And this yeah. only happened in October of last year. Yeah. But this uh, this verdict was appealed by uh, both defense and by prosecution because they were not happy with this verdict. And uh, the court decision and is actually in the UK there is a, a kind of a court of appeals would uh, look into this case. So there's still ongoing case. Uh, kind of, and, uh, and I think I also examined this verdict in, in my studies. And uh, there will be a shortly article published based on this verdict because, again, there was total silence in the Ukrainian media. So there was not a single man actually of revelation from this trial decision. And in the Western media, there were just few publications which mentioned this kind of most important, I think, most relevant revelations about uh, from this verdict, which confirm actually that there were snipers located in, in uh, Maidan control buildings and areas, and they, they shot Maidan protesters, not only police, but also Maidan protesters, which is uh, basically my study. And, and this was, this decision was issued by the uh, injustice system, which is basically not independent, but is heavily uh, controlled by the judiciary, uh, by uh, kind of executive power, basically by presidential administration. So this was a remarkable decision, basically to acknowledge what was uh, dismissed as a conspiracy theory by um, New York Times, by uh, variety of uh, Western media, by uh, persecution, which denied that there were weapons in these locations, in these uh, buildings, and by variety of self-proclaimed experts, and even by Wikipedia, which is now kind of totally declared this. Again, there, are, uh, there is a group of Wikipedia editors who actually now declared that uh, on all Wikipedia that uh, my, that, uh, that this first black massacre is a kind of is conspiracy theory, a Russian conspiracy theory, and which is just quite unbelievable. And now even you have court decision, but there are total, basically total silence, total censorship of this crucial decision, which uh, just acknowledges that this is what actually happened and was actually kind of uh, consistent with my research. And I, it's funny that you bring that up because I prepared exactly that. I prepared the Wikipedia article because I want to read that and I would like to have your reaction and your 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 explanation. Can I just read this for a second? Yeah, Let me yes, read yes. the very beginning of the of the Wikipedia article on the Maidan uh, uh, casualties reads that the deaths occurred in January and February 2014, most of them on 20th February, when police snipers fired on anti-government activists in Kiev. The slain activists are known in Ukraine as the Heavenly Hundred or Heavenly uh, Heavenly Company. Uh, by June 2016, uh, 55 people had been charged in relations to the deaths of protesters, including 29 former members of the Berkut Special Police Force um, uh, or loyalists of the former government and 10 former government officials. And the article goes on and on um, that about how government officials, of course, of Mr. Yanukovych, are responsible for the deaths of these people. And your research and the, re, uh, and the sources that you draw on speak an entirely different language. So can you explain to us what actually happened? Who shot these people? Uh, yes, and I, I can explain this, but I, I can also shortly mention I briefly mention actually what uh, who actually wrote this Wikipedia article because I researched this, and this is for me this is just incredible uh, kind of how this can happen, how this can go on uh, kind of when Wikipedia basically became a tool of propaganda 
and this information about this crucial Maidan massacre. And actually, this article, uh, this is because this is based on my research, and I'm going to publish this, this will be published. Uh, this is already mentioned in my uh, peer-reviewed article. So I already mentioned this group of editors who actually edited uh, all the Maidan massacre-related uh, stuff on Wikipedia. And uh, I'm going to publish even more about this in, in my book as well and in other articles because this is quite incredible. So this uh, one of the person actually who edited this article and included this information, uh, basically blaming uh, Berkut and government forces, actually far right for activists who is a kind of student, uh, he's immigrant from Ukraine, but he lives in Chicago, so he, he got his degree, uh, undergraduate degree in the accounting, but he is active in Svoboda, uh, far-right Svoboda party activities. He, uh, he also kind of published on Wikipedia articles about scientific antisemitism, kind of about, uh, he justifies uh, pogrom by the, uh, by the, Kind of UN and UN organization of Ukrainian nationalists in Nazi occupied Lviv in 1941 by saying that there was uh, by basically claiming that this was kind of uh, uh, because of Jewish collaboration. So this is like person who and, and he is the same person who kind of created several dozen pages on social media attacking me as basically as, as that I falsified Maidan massacre. So this is basically one of the people. So this is like Svoboda activist. And my research shows that this party actually was involved in the massacre because they controlled uh, Hotel Ukraina, which was location of the sniper. So this is just one example. So you have kind of... Uh, and another person who actively involved in this, uh, writing this article, another article on Wikipedia about Maidan massacre, uh, is his um, kind of, uh, he uses um, kind of a name on Wikipedia, my, be my very best wishes. But actually, it, he was identified on various uh, online sources and publications as um, a, a biophysics researcher at the University of Michigan, who is originally from Russia. And he is, I think, a Russian and a Georgian origins. His name is Andrei Lomidze. And he is the one who is uh, basically edits like crazy. Uh, so each day he would edit all the articles about Ukraine, specifically far right. So he whitewash, he literally would whitewash, uh, whitewash any evidence of, uh, for instance, uh, kind of collaboration with Nazi Germany, Nazi, uh, Nazi collaboration by UNUPA during World War II. He whitewashed uh, involvement in mass murder. Of this uh, of these people, he even uh, removed references to SS Galicia Division. He just <laughs> did this as kind of uh, monument to SS Galicia Division in Canada. Even so, kind of this uh, he called this division not an uh, SS Division. Even so, this was SS Division. So this is like a person who is very active, uh, kind of in uh, in whitewashing far right and even contemporary far right like Azov, Svoboda, and so on. And uh, and he was identified also in an article by a historian from the University of Ottawa uh, who actually published this article, peer review journal article, about uh, Wikipedia's internal distortion of history of Holocaust in Poland. So, so this is like person who actively edits uh, kind of all this article and he included information or misinformation about Maidan massacre tile and they deliberately remove all uh, evidence of my academic studies. You cannot find any references to academic studies, my period articles. <laughs> they deliberately viewed them from this uh, Wikipedia yeah. kind of article about Maidan casualty. So this is quite unbelievable. You know, you know, Professor Kachanovsky, this is how you know that what you're doing is actually important, that it, it it's important enough for people who want one version of history to be true, to falsify everything that you are trying to uncover. Right. Um, oh, yes. Uh, it, it's it's that's also why, you know, if you if you want to know how what a what 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 if what French cuisine is, OK, go to Wikipedia and read that but if you want to know anything about a, a hot political topic wikipedia is almost guaranteed almost guaranteed uh lying to your face so that's why we cannot use that but let's let's now talk about your research i mean so again who shot the protesters your research and how why do you why do you think that that assessment of yours um that it was actually the right wing uh uh, of of Ukraine, um, uh, who shot both protesters and um, and police. What what are the indications that this is the right assessment? 
So I, I can start. Yes, this was my original um, theory, which I first mentioned in my uh, paper, which I presented in 2014, and now this the same assessment basically pub, uh, published in peer reviewed journal articles and uh, a book chapter from a major academic press, and would be published now as a book um, and uh, and included in another book. So this uh, kind of research is now, I think, uh, kind of based on evidence. I rely on primary evidence examining all publicly available evidence from, from Maidan Massacre. So I examine thousands of videos from different countries in, uh, kind of in different languages. I examine uh, live broadcasts of Maidan Massacre, which I was watching live myself, and a lot of video recordings disappeared actually after this when I was watching this live. And this is immediately for me, this became very strange event because uh, kind of I saw that what I saw during Massacre was no longer available on the same day, which is, was quite unprecedented to see. And afterwards, I examined testimonies by um, several hundred eyewitnesses in media and social media and uh, Maidan Massacre trial. I examined the entire Maidan Massacre trial proceedings, which were taking place since 2005 and still ongoing, which I mentioned. I, again, I would be looking into a uh, uh, trial tomorrow if they would reveal any other evidence. So this is like evidence which is, and I traveled to the Maidan massacre site myself in 2013, shortly after the massacre, I took photos. I, I studied in Kyiv, I live in Kyiv, so I know the area very well. I stayed in Hotel Ukraine many, many times when I visited Ukraine. I actually had my undergraduate um, uh, kind of an induction in my undergraduate university in my university for undergraduate program in this uh, in another building on Maidan I visited many other buildings so kind of many many times so I knew the area very well kind of and so for me kind of all the research is uh, based on this evidence which is primary evidence based on Ukrainian sources uh, again and this is quite um, uh, as I think uh, quite unbelievable because the amount of evidence is beyond any kind of a comparison about any kind of uh, any other study which I looked and I'm familiar with, and I specialize in political violence. So this is like beyond anything that you can uh, kind of that can be available uh, publicly because you have uh, this is overwhelming evidence which shows that both protesters and police were massacred by uh, snipers located in Maidan control buildings and areas, including in with the involvement of far right and oligarchic uh, elements of the Maidan opposition. And this, um, now, I think first um, first finding that this was, uh, the, the massacre of the police was conducted by some far-right elements and uh, kind of was from uh, from uh, Maidan Conservatory was now, uh, is now basically confirmed by official Ukrainian investigation. So they stated, and even by verdict, uh, by the trial uh, decision, which was issued recently, so they stated that um, these police protesters were killed from a um, music conservatory, and uh, they actually um, identified one of the members of this far-right group, and they even charged one of these members of this far-right group, but later uh, he was released. And he escaped basically. So he was not he is not persecuted. Yeah. So even so, even so he admitted publicly in Ukrainian media that he shot policemen. So this is like admissions that he shot policemen, other members admitted like BBC interview, Ukrainian media, but they never were arrested, no persecution basically. So now you have evidence and even official investigation now trial, they stated that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, this policemen for policemen were killed basically by Maidan snipers, but no nobody is persecuted. And so, so this is like just, first admission. Just for everybody yes. to understand who hasn't who hasn't followed this precisely, the thing is that when the Maidan protests happened, the, there were masses of people, um, especially a lot of Maidan protesters. Then there were some poli some police, and some of the buildings surrounding the Maidan were under the control of the Maidan protesters. Right, they were firmly under Maidan yes. Maidan protest control, and some were under police control, uh, who were trying to stop the protesters from 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 entering further further areas. Right, and then the shooting started. The snipers started and until now until now wikipedia I, I just need to come back to this because it is so incredible until now wikipedia says that the shooters were trying to stoke tensions on both sides and spark greater violence with the goal of justifying a russian invasion and then a quote i think it wasn't just a part of the old regime that plotted the provocation but it was also the work of russian special force forces who served and maintained the ideology of the old regime somebody said who is being quoted here um and the 
the whole point is that your research says nothing of the, this is true. The Russians had no hand in this. It, and the people who shot were not government agents. It was people who were affiliated with the Maidan protesters who wanted to help what was happening, but did so by shooting protesters themselves and police people in order to justify exactly that, exactly what we are reading on Wikipedia right now. That's the whole, that's the goal you're is, is, is what your research also shows, right? Yes, there is like beyond any reasonable doubt that they were responsible. And I even found a video from CNN, which is a video which was never broadcast video by CNN, in which you have a group of these snipers from which you can recognize uh, the kind of, uh, individual members of this group and leader who is connected to far right, uh, right sector and through border members. So they would go in front of my down stage when the massacre started, they would go in front of my down stage with hunting rifles and uh, with a weapon which looked like Kalashnikov weapon, and they would start shooting in CNN. Television crew filmed them, basically. They filmed just, they would walk near the CNN television crew, which uh, kind of would record them, uh, but never show this on the video. And they, then this group of uh, snipers would start shooting in the direction of the internal troops and police. And this is this coincides with the location and time when these policemen were killed and, and wounded. So this is like th this is evidence which is publicly available, but it was I'm sorry not publicly available because it was never but uh, it was uh, show kind of uh, it was uh, filmed by CNN and CNN never shown this. Uh, so this is they just broadcast very short fragment of one of this member shooting from a uh, hunting rifle and they said they did not know if this was kind of real uh, ammunition or not, live ammunition or not, which is quite unbelievable because you have this footage and I included this in my video appendix. But I can also say about this Russian uh, kind of uh, claim. So I, my studies found no evidence of any Russian involvement. Again, this is based on um, examination of all available evidence. And this finding of my research was confirmed officially by Ukrainian persecution, persecutor general of Ukraine, who actually stated publicly that there was no evidence of Russian involvement in the Maidan massacre, which was found by, by investigation. And now uh, the Maidan massacre trial decision uh, stated also that they the investigation of they examine all uh, Russian agents uh, they are very about during the Maidan massacre and they found no involvement of Russian agents uh, again in the Maidan massacre. So you have three sources again. You have my research, academic research. You have you have uh, studies. You have uh, official government investigation and and uh, you kind of Ukrainian uh, trial decision. And all they stated that there was no Russian involvement. But Wikipedia basically the same people because th this is the people who push this kind of uh, this like propaganda and disinformation because they want to justify. Uh, kind of all the far right, so they want to whitewash mass murders and they want to whitewash far right, and they do this openly. Even so, actually, one of the uh, again, one of the protesters who were killed, uh, according to this entire uh, decision, was killed from um, from also my down uh, kind of control location, and he was editor of Wikipedia. He was Ukrainian editor of Wikipedia, and this is I'm gonna mention this in my article, popular article, which will, will be published shortly, because this is quite unbelievable that they justify kind of. Mass media and they promote this false information and they censor basically my academic research or kind of research by other scholars who actually kind of now there are more than uh, 50 scholars who who kind of who wrote about my research and or based on my research they stated the same finding about my down massacre and uh, and even but this is again denied and there is a claim even kind of on Wikipedia they use specific uh, publication opinion piece by one uh, kind of uh, Opinion a writer whose uh, her name is Katie Young. She has no exper expertise in Ukrainian politics or research or something, but she is very active on this neoconservative website Bulwark, which is a basically kind of just a partisan website. And she published uh, her kind of a piece about this verdict in which she claim she claims that there was no evidence of any Maidan snipers, and she and she even claims that there was uh, no decision in the, that uh, court decision did not um, kind of state anything about the Russian involvement in the Maidan massacre. Even so, I found the text of this verdict again in Ukrainian language on the official website, which I translated into English, which clearly states that the, this is a passage. But again, because she published on this website, so this Wikipedia basically uses her own misrepresentation of the Maidan massacre as reliable kind of a source and uh, totally dismisses the trial investigation 
uh, results which are emphatic, which I mentioned, which is available in, in public, available, but they send the even official medal massacre verdict about not only the involvement of Russia, kind of concerning the claim by Russia about Russian involvement, which is false claim again and debunked by uh, my, uh, my studies by uh, government investigation in Ukraine and uh, by uh, this uh, terror decision, but they do the same about um, uh, terror decision concerning Maidan snipers. So this is quite unbelievable to see that this is, can be done so openly and so brazenly. And uh, there, again, there are no media reports, nothing, nothing in contrast, for instance, to this big scandal which took place in Canada when uh, there was kind of a scandal involving a uh, far right uh, kind of member of uh, this Galicia division, SS Galicia division, who was given a uh, public ovation in the Canadian parliament. Uh, yes, and um, now, uh, uh, but it, when it comes to UK, there is totally different standard. And I think this is a big issue because they, they have different standard media and even Wikipedia, they, they kind of, uh, they do this openly. Kind of try to, to kind of mislead and, um, and propaganda. And for this reason, I always tell my students since uh, since I started teaching again many, many years ago, I would never to use Wikipedia because this is not reliable. And this is just an illustration of this situation, this case. Of course, and it's even worse. It's not that it's not reliable. It is actively a tool of propaganda. And the propaganda yes. by now has progressed so far that it's not just what you're supposed to believe about something that we're not sure about. It is so. It has gone so far to falsification of, of historical events, which are utterly clear. And the interesting thing that you're saying is that even the Ukrainian official um, uh, legal case has now confirmed that it was not shooters from the, from the, from the government, it was shooters from the side of the Maidan who were, who were involved in killing. 